hello everybody in this video we will be doing the chapter 1 of f2 which is ma management accounting so we'll be covering the first chapter in this video so the playlist of the entire f2 all the chapters is given in the description box below in case you want to watch f3 or uh, uh, f1 i'll link the playlist of that and the study kits as well in the description box below so let's get started so this is a very theoretical chapter this is a very easy chapter so here we're going to cover it very quickly because this is not something which is new to you i'm sure you know all the concepts already so now let's begin with it so first we have accounting for management so these are the chapter learning objectives you can pause the video and think about it moving on so now in this video let's leave the flow chart in this chapter First, we're going to see what data is and what information is. So this is not something which is new to you. You know what data is. Data is the raw facts. It is the raw things which is not organized in a particular manner. Information is when data is arranged in a manner which is understandable and which is easy to understand and which is, you know, available to the managers and they can use it to make decisions. So what is data? Data means facts. Data consists of numbers, letters, symbols, raw facts, events and transactions which have been recorded but not yet processed into a form suitable for use. So it is not yet suitable for using. Now we'll come what to what information is. So information is just data and uh, it is the data which is processed in such a way that it is meaningful to the person who receives it for making decisions so we can use this data to make decisions so now the data is in a manner which is easy to understand and which is in a good format so that is what is known as information the terms data and information are often used interchangeably in everyday language but however we need to know what the difference is as data is converted into information, some of the detail of the data is eliminated and replaced by summaries which are easier to understand. So when data is given meaning, then that becomes information. Now moving on, let's do the test to understanding one. What if is the difference between data and information? So tell me what's the difference between data and information. I'm giving you a minute to do the question. Actually not even a minute. So firstly, we have they are the same. That's not true. Data can only be figures, whereas information can be facts or figures. That's not true. We know that data is facts. Information results from sorting and analyzing data. So when you sort the data into a meaningful form and when you analyze the data, you get information. That's right. Data results from obtaining many individual pieces of information. We just studied that you get information from data. So how can you say that you get data from information? So the answer is just C. Okay. Now we have what are the attributes of good information? So what do you mean by good information? And what are the factors which good information must be having? Information is provided to management to assist them with the planning, controlling operations and making decisions. Management decisions are improved when they are provided with better quality information obviously better decisions are taken when the quality of the information is better in nature right so now let's come back to what the attributes of good information are so the acronym which you need to understand for good information is accurate now let's see what the every letter of the word accurate actually stands for so a is accurate itself so you know whenever there is a good piece of information it should be correct it should be accurate it should be exact in nature so degree of accuracy depends on the reason why the information is needed a report now let's see some examples a report on the performance of different divisions of a business may show figures to the nearest dollar or nearest thousand dollars so whatever you're showing you need to show it in an accurate manner when calculating the cost of a unit of output managers may want the cost to be accurate to the nearest cent now the a inaccurate which is the qualities of good information is accurate itself so the second one is complete and the third c is cost effective 
so then we have complete and cost effective okay now let's see what complete is manager should be given all the information they need but information should not be excessive a complete control report on variances should include all standard and actual costs which is necessary to aid the understanding of the variance calculation so right now i know that you might not be able to understand what exactly the variance reports are or what the variance calculations are in the following chapters you'll be able to understand it very well why because we'll be studying them in the detail so let's just try to understand what exactly they're trying to tell so when they say that information must be complete which means you can't be providing half information or uh, random information or just incomplete information you need to be giving a complete information regarding whatever the topic is production managers will need the variance analysis relating to material usage whereas purchasing managers will need the variance analysis relating to material prices so variance analysis is what you have estimated and what has actually happened the difference between the two is known as variance don't worry if you're not able to understand in the following chapters when you do it you will come back to these chapters and you'll understand everything so next you have cost effective so it's said in the word so let's first require uh, revise what a c is in accurate a for accurate c for complete so these are the attributes of good information now you have cost effective so what do you mean by cost effective information the value of information should exceed the cost of producing it so this states so the value of information should exceed the cost of producing it so management information is valuable why because it assists the decision making if a decision backed by information is different from what it would have been without the information the value of information equates to the amount of money served as a result so it needs to be cost effective in nature which means that it should be backed from information and it also needs to be having certain you know um it should be cost effective in nature moving on let's see yeah let's see what the marginal cost versus the marginal benefit is so production costs let's see production costs in a factory can be reported with varying levels of frequency ranging from daily to annually costs and benefits of reporting relate to the frequency of reporting so whatever the cost of reporting is and whatever the benefits of reporting is all that relate to the frequency of reporting so how frequently you report something so that's how we see how the cost and benefit is so what is cost benefit analysis cost benefit analysis is when you're measuring the costs and the benefits of a particular let's say decision information has to be gathered collated and reported in a proportion to frequency and costs will move in line with this initially benefits increase sharply but this increase starts to tail off a point may come where information overload sets in and benefits actually start to decline and even become negative if managers are overwhelmed with information they can actually get in the way of completing the job so what do you mean by completing the job and what do you mean by the information overload so when there is an excess of information then it obviously kind of um, brings down the efficiency of the decision making and the benefits of that good information is less because there is an overload of the information so now let's see this graph this is very easy you just need to know that what this is so okay as the color here is not clear let me just explain what this is so this is the benefit and uh, this is the cost so these are the dollars we have the dollars and let's see what the number of reports are so how does the benefit go 
so I, as we have mentioned that the benefit is initially rising but with certain like after a while the benefit goes down however the cost just keeps increasing why because you are keeping on uh, getting the information right so benefits are always increasing in the starting but after a particular moment of time the benefit stops because the information is all acquired but the cost always keeps rising then we have you in the accurate and that is understandable so obviously whatever we are doing in the reports or whatever we are using that should be understandable in nature which means the people must be able to understand whatever you have been writing which means use of technical language or use of jargon must be limited so accountants must always be careful about the way in which they present the financial information to non financial managers right so it should be understandable because the managers it's not sh- uh, for sure that everybody is from the accounts background so the topics or the subject or the report must be portrayed in a manner that even people who are not from the commerce background who are not from the accounts background even they should be able to understand the information so that is why we have used the term understandable and then we have relevant so obviously we need to include only that information which is relevant in nature if it is not relevant then there is no need to mention it it's just time waste and it's just information overload so the information contained within a report should be relevant to its purpose redundant parts should be removed for example the sales team may need to know the total cost of producing a unit to calculating the selling price but will not need to know the breakdown into the material labor and overhead costs so this is something which is not related to the sales team so you don't have to mention it to the sales team then you have authoritative so what is authoritative when you're talking about authoritative when you're giving a certain information it should be authoritative or you need to be answerable and you should have some kind of authority to do so to make sure that the information you are giving is real in nature and it is fair in nature which means information should be trusted and provided from reliable sources so that the users can have confidence in their decision making which means that information should be trusted which means people have to trust the information which you are providing so to do that you need the information from let's say reliable sources so why should it be authoritative so that people have confidence in the decision making okay so let's just revise what our uh, full forms of accurate was e for accurate c for complete c for cost effective u for understandable r for um, relevant not reliable we have r for relevant don't get confused it's not reliable in information it is relevant then we have authoritative after that we have t which is timely so information should be provided to a manager in time for decisions to be made based on that information so if you give information very late or if you give information which is not true anymore then there's no point of uh, using that information right so obviously it should be timely in nature and then we have easy to use so what is easy to use easy to use that means that uh, we must always think about the person using the information we provide and make sure that the information meets their needs so whoever is using the our information we need to think from their perspective and we need to see it whether if it's easy for them to use it or not now we have what data information knowledge and wisdom is so the arrival of the internet has made it much easier for organizations and individuals to access data at the right time and right place so you know that since when we have internet it is so easy to access information even little children have access to so much information even we ourselves have access to so much information which earlier probably people did not have access to so at the same time the internet has opened up questions about data being error free and about who can have access to it so we're not sure of all the things which are listed on the internet if they're true or not why 
बिकॉज वीव हर्ड सो मच अबाउट दिस देर आर फैक्ट्स ऑन दी डेट विच आर नॉट ट्रू बिकॉज एनी बडी कैन मेक अ वेबसाइट एज वेल एज द इश्यू ऑफ डेटा क्वालिटी देर इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ हाउ डेटा इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड नॉलेज रिलेट टू वन एंड अदर रासल एकॉफ वॉज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट पीपल टू स्पीक ओके लेट्स जस्ट सर्कल द नेम रासल एकॉफ so Russell Akoff was one of the first people to speak of there being a hierarchy which referred to as the data information knowledge wisdom dikw hierarchy so what is dikw hierarchy so this is something which has been given by Russell Akoff so Russell Akoff gave us a hierarchy and uh, that hierarchy is called as dikw and what is dikw data information knowledge and wisdom let's see what dik dikw is according to this model data are simple facts or figures or maybe even a photograph or an illustration in this form in this form data is unstructured and uninterrupted information comes from processing or structuring data in a meaningful way another way of looking at this is the information is interpreted data an interesting story is told by joan margetta in her book what management is so that's a book by another author and yeah so this is an example so you need to pause the video and read this example by yourself and i'll just move on knowledge is again different to data and information don't get confused that is uh, knowledge same as data or information because knowledge is much more personal and the presence or absence of knowledge knowledge can normally only be seen through the actions of the individuals so what is the way we are behaving or what actions we take or what decisions we make that is what reflects the knowledge right so when knowledge is written down it effectively becomes information finally with respect to wisdom it is difficult to define this concept so you all know what wisdom is which is acquired knowledge if that's how i would put it down in words so wisdom has something to do with understanding or insight it is to do with achieving a good long term outcome in relation to the circumstances you are in okay now we have what mission statements are so what is a mission statement every company has a purpose statement or an objective statement right so that statement or that document is known as a mission statement so before any planning can take place the mission of the business needs to be established so the mission statement is a statement in writing that describes the overall aims of an organization so the overall aims and all of that is written in a mission statement in other words it sets out the whole purpose of the business so there are four key elements to mission statements so what all does a mission statement have so first of all there is a purpose and there is a strategy policies and culture and values so before we read this let's first see some examples of what mission statements exactly are after seeing the example you will be able to understand this topic better so these are few companies and let's see what their mission statement states okay first thing you need to always remember this mission statements do not have quantitative factors which means they don't have a number or something in accounting or a financial nature things which mission statement is something which even a common man can understand it because it does not involve any complex calculations or complex numerical figures so let's see the mission statement of honda maintaining a global viewpoint we are dedicated to supplying products of highest quality yet at a reasonable price for worldwide customer satisfaction so that is what honda says so what did you understand the purpose is given here their um, values are reflected here what strategy they are taking is reflected here and the last thing which is their culture and their uh, what do you say their policies and culture is also reflected here So now let's see of Walt Disney Company, Virgin Atlantic, Tesco, and Batters are dogs and cats home. So these are another examples of the mission statements. I would like you to pause the video and read the mission statements of the other four. 
by doing that you'll be able to understand the principles better now let's read this and it will be very easy now what are the four key elements in a mission statement so there needs to be a purpose what is the purpose why does the business exist and who does it exist for and then we have strategy and what is the strategy what does a business provide and how it is provided and then we have policies and culture how does a business expect its staff to act or behave and then we have values which means what are the key core values or the core um, principles of a business now we have some characteristics in a mission statement like it should be only brief and it should not have more than a page it should uh, give the aims it should be open ended and it does not include commercial terms such as profit okay and it is not related to a particular time it is something like we saw the examples we can use it forever it's not like it's only for this period or something like that so read all these um, characteristics of mission statement as well i'm sure that i've explained everything and now there's nothing which will be confusing for you so now let's see what kaplan the book you're studying from what their company's mission statement is so just read this as well even this is another mission statement um example moving on we have now what the managerial process of planning decision making and control is so what is planning what is decision making and what is control so now these are the things which you need to understand so the main functions of management are involved in what planning is what decision making is and what controlling is so i'm sure you've done this in business studies in grade 12 but however we will still be revising it clearly over here in order for you to understand so you know what planning really is planning in setting objectives and identifying the various courses of action or identifying in the way or the objectives that can be achieved and after doing these we need to make a decision as to how you can achieve the objectives and then the objectives can be achieved based on the information provided after that we have implement decision which means after planning we can take a decision after that we have to control now once you make a plan and once you implement the plan by making a decision you need to control what you have done like we need to gather information about what are the actual results which we have achieved and then we have to compare actual results and expected results then we have to revise original objectives if necessary so that is what planning really is so planning means establishing the objectives of an organization and formulating relevant strategies that can be used to achieve those objectives in order to make plans it helps us it helps to know what has happened in the past so that decisions about what is achievable in the future can be made for example if a manager is planning future sales volumes he needs to know what the sales volume have been in the past so planning can be short term which means tactical planning and if you can recall from business and technology paper we've done what tactical planning is or what the tactical level of management is it is a middle level management what is strategic it is a top level what is operational it is the day to day so planning is looked at in more detail in the next chapter during planning process the mission statement of a business is used to produce effective aims uh and objectives for employees and the company as a whole so what are the objectives of effective uh, aims and what are the how are perfect aims or perfect uh what do you call objectives need to be defined so if you can recall what was the abbreviation of accurate for what was it for it was for good information now if you can recall from the business and technology paper we have done the abbreviation smart what was smart used for smart was something which was used for good objectives if you can recall it so yeah what is s s is for specific in nature which means are the objectives well defined and understandable are they specific in nature and can you measure your objective is your uh, 
realistic so is your objective realistic are the aims realistic and do you think yeah, they are attainable or they are achievable are are for relevant do you think um, these objectives are relevant for the people involved and to the mission of the business and are they timed so these are the objectives of good objectives or these are the objectives of how objectives have to be so this is what we have seen for good information right by following the smart hierarchy a business should be able to produce plans that lead to goal congruence throughout the departments centers and regional offices now we have what decision making is so you know what decision making is decision making is 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 basically just taking a particular decision in order to move closer to your goals so decision making means involves considering information that has been provided and making an informed decision in most situation decision making involves making a choice between two or more alternatives managers need reliable information to compare the different courses of action so we need to like have various courses of action and we need to choose the best one in order to make a decision which is more feasible for us the first part of decision making process is planning the second part is controlling so how do you make a decision first you plan what decision you want to take and after planning what kind of decision you want to take you control it after you take the decision you control it now you know what controlling was it is to check how the results have varied and uh, bridging the gap between what we had planned and what has actually occurred so information relating to the actual results of an organization is reported to the managers managers use the information relating to the actual results to take the control measures and to assess and amend the original budget or plans so that's about what control means and now we have the flow chart which is input into the system then we have the output and then we have the plan budget and control now let's come to the test to understanding and let's try to answer the question preparation of the annual budget for a cost center annual budget so that is basically planning and making a decision because we are preparing something revise budgets for the next period so in when we are revising budget that means we are taking a control measure and decision making implement decisions based on information provided so that is just making a decision setting organization's objectives for the next period is planning and decision making and then we have compare actual results with the expected results <clears throat> now let's come to what the levels of planning are so there are various levels of planning so the as we have studied in the bt paper we know that strategic level of management is the top level management and in strategic level we know that um, strategic planning is also known as a long term planning or corporate planning so strategic planning and long term planning or corporate planning or the top level management planning is the same thing so it has a long term which means 5 years plus and it involves the entire organization senior managers formulate long term objectives and plans for an organization as a whole these objectives and plans should um, all be aiming at the company's mission so whatever plan the long term or the strategic level makes it is something which is for the long term in nature next we have tactical planning so what is tactical tactical is middle level management so tactical management makes uh, strategic plan takes the strategic plan and breaks it down into manageable chunks so it first takes whatever the plan the strategic level has and then it breaks down into smaller parts or manageable parts and it gives it and in individual areas of the business and enable the strategic plan to be achieved senior and middle management make short to medium plans for the next year so this is something which is 
a bit below than the strategic level then we have operational planning operational planning is nothing but someone who is involved in the day to day operations of the business so operational planning involves making day to day decisions about what to do next and how to deal with problems as they arise all managers are involved in day to day decisions a simple hierarchy of management tasks can be presented as follows strategic planning and control is for long term tactical planning and control is for short term operational planning and control is for day to day moving on we have the differences here so let's see what the objective strategic plans tactical plans operational plans of the following is just pause the video and do this by yourself it's easy the management accountant has communicated a detailed budget to ensure that cost savings targets are achieved in the forthcoming period so what is this in the fourth coming period what do you think the answer is the answer is b why because uh, the we are talking about the fourth coming period so that is something which is not as long term so this is something which is a bit lesser than that so this is nothing but tactical level because it's not as long term now we have the next topic cost revenue profit and investment centers so the first thing we're going to study here is the responsibility accounting what is responsibility accounting so responsibility accounting is based on identifying individual parts of a business which are the responsibility of a single manager so whatever parts of the business are managed by a single person that is to be identified so that is what is known as responsibility accounting a responsibility center is an individual part of business whose manager has personal responsibility for its performance so what did you understand about responsibility accounting so the part of the business where only one person is managing that part is known as a responsibility sector and there the accounting is done and that is known as a responsibility accountant now we have what is known as the um cost center so what is a cost center a cost center is a production or service location function activity or item of equipment whose costs are identified and recorded so the costs are recorded in the books after they are being identified so what is a cost center exactly so it is basically a production location or a service location or the function activity or item of equipment where the costs are identified and recorded so cost centers are where the um, cost of the product is identified and it is recorded in the book of accounts for a paint manufacturer cost centers might be mixing department packaging department administration marketing department so in all these various departments have to be considered and have to be consulted before you set the cost or before you get to know how much cost has been incurred when you were making this um thing for an accountancy term the cost centers might be audit taxation accountancy cost center managers need to have information about costs that are incurred and charged to their cost centers the performance of a cost center manager is judged on the extent to which cost targets have been achieved so that is how a performance is judged of a cost center management by seeing how much of the target has been achieved so what is a cost center again cost center is a production location or a service location function activity or item whose costs are identified and located so in the same way now we have what a revenue center is so it is just the opposite of the cost center a revenue center is a part of the organization that earns the sales revenue it is similar to a cost center but only revenues and not costs are recorded revenue centers are generally associated with selling activities for example regional sales manager may have responsibility for regional sales each regional manager would probably have sales targets 
so that is how it is so in a cost center you have where the cost is identified and recorded in a revenue center you have where the revenues are identified and recorded in the same way we have a profit center this is where the profits are identified and recorded so a profit center is a part of the business for which both the cost incurred and the revenue earned are identified so obviously you need to find out what the revenue is and you need to find out what the cost is in order to find the profit right what exactly profit is profit is nothing but revenue minus the cost right so the profit centers are often found in large organizations with a divisionalized structure each division is treated as a profit center within each profit center there could be several cost centers and revenue centers the performance of a profit center manager measured in terms of the profit made by the center the manager must therefore be responsible for both costs revenues and in a position to plan and control both data and information relating to both costs and revenues must be co collected and allocated okay so that was profit center now we have what the investment center is so managers of investment centers are responsible for investment decisions as well as decisions which are affecting the costs and revenues so whoever is taking care of the investments or whoever is taking care about what affects the costs and revenues the investment center managers are therefore accountable for the performance of the capital employed as well as the profits the performance of investment centers is measured in terms of the profit earned relative to the capital invested this is known as return on capital employed okay so the performance of investment centers is mentioned is measured in the terms of profit earned relative to the capital invested so what is roc which is return on capital employed so whatever return you, you are getting like getting generated by the capital you have employed that is the profitability of the investment centers an example of an investment center could be the uk and european divisions of the mncs moving on we have what the financial cost and management accounting is this is something which you will already done but we'll quickly go through them so what is financial accounting financial accounting is uh, recording the financial transactions of an organization summarizing them in a periodic financial statements for the external users so financial statements are something which are like seen by the external users the balance sheet the pnl account and the cash flow statement and they analyze and interpret the financial position of the business the main duties of the financial accountant include maintaining the bookkeeping system of the nominal ledger payables control account receivables control account and so on and to prepare the financial statements as required by the law and the accounting standards information produced by the financial accounting system is usually insufficient for the needs of management for decision making so that is what is known as the financial accounting you have already done that now um you know what cost accounting or what management accounting is so this is something which is new to you all and this is the subject which we are doing currently so managers usually want to know about the costs and the profits of individual products and services in order to obtain this information details are needed for each cost revenue profit and investment center such information is provided by cost accounting and management accounting systems so when you need to know the detailed information of every single center like let's say cost center revenue center profit center and investment center so such information is provided by cost accounting and management accounting systems so what is cost accounting cost accounting is a system for recording data and producing information about the costs for the products produced by an organization or the services it provides so it is also used to establish the costs for particular activities now we have what um cost accounting involves it involves a careful evaluation techniques employed in cost accounting are designed to provide financial information the terms um the terms cost accounting and management 
uh, uh, um, where we, yeah, the terms cost accounting and management accounting are often used to mean the same thing. So, management accounting has cost accounting at its essential foundation. So, what is the essential foundation of management accounting? The essential foundation of management accounting is nothing but cost accounting which we will we'll be studying. Okay, now let's come to what non-financial information is. Information provided by cost accounting systems is financial in nature. Financial information is important for management because many objectives of an organization are financial in nature, such as making profits and avoiding insolvency. Managers also need information of non-financial nature. At a strategic level, management need to know about developments in their markets and the economic situation. They also need to know about new technology that emerges and about the activities of competitors. At a tactical level, they might want to know about the issues like the quality and everything. So there are things which are sometimes non-financial in nature as well. So that is what you need to keep in your mind. So there are two types of information, financial and non-financial information. Both of them are taken into consideration. Now let's come to what the differences are between the financial accounting and the management accounting. This is also not new. So information management accounting is produced for internal use. Financial is for external use. Purpose. So management accounting is given so that we can plan, we can control and we can decision make. These are the three things which we've learned. And financial accounting to record the financial performance, to get to know what the financial position is at the end of the year. Now let's see what the legal requirements are. So there is no legal requirement for management accounting. It is up to the company's wish. If you want to, then you can have a uh, management accounting, but it's not a compulsion by the law. However, financial statements are limited. Companies are um, governed by the law and they need to have a financial statement. Next, we have a format. So management accounting does not have any format and uh, financial accounting has a certain particular format. And then we have the nature of information. Financial accounting has only financial, like mainly, mostly financial. And management accounting has both of them. Time period. So management accounting is something which is historical in nature. And it also has planning. So it is also forward looking. But uh, financial accounting is only based on the history. What is the role of management accounting within an organization's MIS, which is the management information system? So the management information system of an organization is likely to be able to prepare the following annual statutory accounts, budgets and forecasts, product profitability reports, cash flow reports, capital investment appraisal reports, standard cost and variance analysis, returns to government departments. Okay, right now I know these um, pointers might be very confusing and makes no sense to you but these are exactly the chapters which we will be learning in the further lessons so don't worry management information is generally supplied to management in the form of reports so reports may be routine reports prepared on a regular basis or they may be prepared on a special purpose the following assertions relate to management accounting the purpose of management accounting is to provide accounting information to the managers of the business and internal users. Management accounts are only concerned with the cost of goods, service and... Uh, okay, so the answer 1 is correct, 2 is not correct, so it is B only. Now let's see what are the limitations of the management information system so there are a number of respects in which management accounting information may fail to meet its objective if of assisting management in the decision making so now let's see what are the that's it we have come to the end of the chapter so let's see what are the ways in which failures can occur first thing is accuracy so it might not be accurate because you might overestimate the cost right it can be timeliness, some things might be old and it won't be fit to the time and that might be something which is not relevant anymore. Understandable, so um, sometimes things might not be understandable as well. Relevant cost and revenues. 
सो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट एवरीथिंग इज रिलेवेंट राइट सो फ्यूचर इंक्रीमेंटल एंड कैश फ्लोज सो फ्यूचर सो समथिंग द कॉस्ट विच और विच माइट इनकर इन द फ्यूचर वे माइट नॉट बी एंटिसिपेटेड and incremental is something which might happen the extra cost or revenue which is also not included and cash flows we might not really know what the exact status of cash flow is in the management accounting so non financial information also it's very difficult to verify the non financial information right so a processing company needs to increase its output in order to take advantage of an increase in the total market so these are the two alternatives pause it and read it for yourself so that's it now we know what external information is so it is nothing but um environment like the government actions competitor actions customer demands and other factors conventional accounting systems focus entirely on information system but however now things have been changing so that's it we're done with the first chapter of management accounting which is accounting for management i will just link the description uh, link the playlists in the description box below in case you want to do f1 i'll link the playlist of that as well and f2 currently which we're doing i'll link that also and i'll try my best to make the videos regularly and please keep checking out the playlists and we'll also simultaneously be starting with the f3 i'll link that also in the description box below thank you